Welcome back to another Kicking Tables. Today, we are delighted to welcome Jeffrey Ovaja, the creator of Asunder on Kickstarter now. Jeffrey, congratulations on getting funded yesterday. Thanks very much. Yeah, super grateful. So tell us, uh, why don't you give us, first of all, the elevator pitch of Asunder? What is your game? Yeah, so Asunder is a word replacement strategy game that uses playing cards uh, for the majority of the actions and components of the game. So you set up a large six-fold game board, put all the cards on it, and you draft uh, action spaces very similar to Agricola. Uh, so everybody's got meeples, and they draft action spaces to collect resources, and the whole point is you're gearing up for a giant monster battle because a monster is attacking the city. So you're trying to acquire champions and equipment and make sure that you're entirely prepared. And at the end of the first four rounds, normal strategic competitive gameplay stops and everything transitions to cooperative battle where you use all of the champions and everything that you acquired to fight the monster. You beat the monster, great, game continues, everybody gets victory points and, and shares in the glory. But if the monster wins, game's over. For everybody. So, for everybody. It's supposed to be fun, so obviously you yeah. can continue. Um, but in, in, in its most uh, you know core form, you should stop once the monster wins, because everyone's dead. <laughs> you should <laughs> stop, because that's what the rules tell you to do. Yeah. <laughs> so this is yeah. this is your, your first game. Um, you know, what, what are the origins of Asunder? How, how did this game come to be? Uh, so it's probably worth talking a little bit about myself to be able to properly answer that. Um, I'm an electrical engineer and uh, studied at UC Santa Barbara, go Gauchos. And uh, I've been in engineering and the motion capture world actually for a wow. long time now. Uh, yeah, so a lot of our clients are, you know, Industrial Light and Magic and, and uh, you know, Activision and these, these big mocap studios. And so I've been in a world of games uh, vocationally, but also personally for a long time. I've played Magic the Gathering since 1994 and I love tabletop games. Clank, Catan, you name it. And one of my favorite games of all time is Agricola. And I just really love that you have to be able to be multifaceted, but if somebody takes the spot you were gearing up for the whole time, uh, you can adjust course and change tack and, and refine your strategy and tactics based on what your end goal is. And you always kind of have to keep that in mind, but also play the short game. So what I really wanted to do was make a game that had that same uh, you know, strategic mechanic Right. in worker placement and really being able to look at the board and understand everything that you do gives me value in some capacity, but also was more engaging. One of the things that I feel really falls short of Agricola while the game itself is great is the art. It's cartoony and light and fun. Um, mm -hmm. And I really like the depth of the worlds that's created in Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons. It's something that was really imaginative and emotionally engaging. So I wanted to combine the two. And then I said, but then that's just kind of dolling up another game. Right. W what, what can I really do to make this different? And I was actually in Montreal uh, when this happened, when all of the TV was French. We had no internet. My <laughs> family was asleep, was bored off my tree at 8.30 at night. And uh, that's when I said, what if it was both competitive and cooperative? Nice. Uh, and that's kind of how it was born. And then I started really thinking about the storyline before the mechanics and there's a very rich storyline behind the game as well so yeah that's that's the origin of asunder that that's very really cool. fast and and it was born in canada i appreciate that that's awesome <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now well, you guys. now for first time players uh of course everybody's going to be a first time player to asunder but when they get your game from kickstarter they sit down to play what are some strategies you would suggest they focus on well, that's a great question. Uh, I'll answer that by telling the story of the strategies that the people that first played it immediately told me okay. after playing the game. So it's, it's very simplistic in that every game you start with the same eight action spaces, um, and then there's four and five player action spaces, and then you start revealing action spaces per round. But they have some randomization. The first four rounds you might see like the fourth action space in the first round because it's all shuffled. Um, but there are multiple paths to victory. The straight and narrow is you collect resources, which is called influence in this game. You collect the resource cubes and you amass enough so you can spend them on the champions. And the champions are the main way to fight monsters. They're actually the only way to deal with damage to monsters. So you have to do that no matter what. Right. But if people primarily focus on, 
I'm going to go to the largest uh, resource collection spot possible so that I can spend the most money on champions and have all of the champions in front of me to deal the most damage, they will win using only that mechanic maybe 50% of the time. Okay. You have to be able to look at the board and say, everybody's fighting for this one uh, champion because uh, it, it's the best one on the board. I'm going to get equipment. The equipment helps augment your ability to fight the monsters in battle as well as gives you some advantages during normal rounds and gameplay, plus have latent value on their own because they're worth victory points. Or you have another path where you can uh, improve your guild prestige, which has eight levels, and everybody chooses a guild identity when they start, right? There are five guilds. There's Assassin, Paladin, Warrior, Alchemist, and uh, Necromancer. And each of them have your own unique abilities, and as you improve your guild prestige, you get free resources, free victory points, improve the abilities of champions of that guild, and gain overall benefits. So as you increase your guild prestige, you're going to get more and more value out of it. So the one thing that I'd say for everybody that's going to play their first time is the straight and narrow is very clear, but there's a reason why it's very clear. You have to be able to look around it to develop a strategy to really win. And a couple of points by getting uh, equipment or prestige is going to end up being the biggest difference maker at the end of the game. Okay, excellent. That's, That's really good insight into the game, especially for people who have never played it before. Yeah. All right. So you mentioned the the guilds. How different are each of the guilds, and how balanced are they? That's a super super excellent question. The guilds are very different thematically and flavor wise. To make the game simpler, they're not dramatically different in in gameplay style. Right. All of them are going to have uh, attack dice and health and uh, a cost associated with them. But what makes them different? is that different abilities uh, process with different dice rolls or with different um, triggers within the game. So for example, necromancers all roll dice in pairs, right? Because they usually, uh, you know, are reviving undead in pairs. Uh, And so whenever you roll a pair of dice that matches, for example, one of the abilities, uh, zombify and disentomb, one of the abilities lets you roll an extra die of that type. It's really cool. While the warriors are going to have, uh, you know, larger damage set, but because they're warriors, there's a minimum damage amount. So you can never have a bad roll with a warrior. They always have a minimum, let's say if you're rolling a D12, you always hit a minimum of six, even if you oh. roll a one. Okay, yep. cool. So they all have unique, uh, unique abilities that are flavored based on the, the guild identity, right? Um, again, alchemists are, the, you know, the wizards of... of of the group and they have, uh, you know, tons of power where their dice rolls tend to be two to four points higher, even with some of the early low cost champions, but their health is lower. So they're far more volatile, but the higher numbers you roll with the alchemists, the more damage you do. So fundamentally the guilds are very similar mechanically. So it's easy to play the game, but uh, have a completely different feel in play style and have, different abilities that are very exciting and on brand when you're in the battles. Now I want to keep on the guild uh, topic for a second because the, the characters or the, the champions you can uh, hire are also for each guild. How important is it for, for you to stay on guild when hiring champions? Because you can purchase, you can purchase any champion, but is it more important to stay on guild? Uh, So technically, Absolutely. Is it actually important? Will you lose the game if you don't stay on guild? No. But there's a very basic component, and then there's a deeper component. The basic component is if you choose the identity of warriors, for example, every time you enlist a warrior champion, you get one extra victory point. It's a small bonus. It's not significant. You'll maybe accrue five or six victory points over the course of a game, but for a 100-point average victory point at the end of the game, uh, that's, that's not bad, 5%. Um, but what's more important is the third tier of all of the guild prestige are on guilds. So if you're the necromancer and your guild prestige hits level three, you get necromancer specific boosts. Actually, same at level one. Multiple tiers have on guild boosts. So it's going to augment your ability to stay within your guild. 
but you got to play with the game, right? It's entirely random. If you shuffle all of the champions and five out of the 10 that show up are paladin and they're easily the most accessible and powerful based on what's on the board, you're going to have to change tack. Right, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because you have to play with what's on the board. Your guild may not be on the board because it is random. That's and that's uh, you. So you got to change your tactics for sure. You uh, say on your Kickstarter that there's actually a solo mode as well. Tell us about the solo mode. Yeah, so the solo mode is essentially the same as every other mode. You're really trying to continue to beat your best victory point score and immerse yourself in the game by... There are 15 different monsters in the game, and they're each at uh, a different tier, so five at uh, you know level one, two, and three. So when you play the game, you can really see different combinations of champions and how they interact with the monsters and it's really more for familiarity but it's still a lot of fun mm -hmm. to get to the point where you've done all of the things that you do to get the most victory points and then have to switch to battle and then you're still rolling dice against a monster and you can still lose right. so i think that that's very emotionally engaging even if you're playing by yourself so you would still you would only be playing with one guild in solo and it's it's more like a i would consider that almost like a training mode you know, uh, get, like yeah. you said, getting to know the game more intimately by playing solo. Uh, but yep. in, in solo mode, you still only control one guild? Yes, you still only have one guild identity, but technically, if you're just playing against yourself, you can go for more uh, uh, of a fun strategy than you would staying on guild the whole time. If you're just trying to beat your own personal... If you're golfing, you're not always trying to beat your handicap. Sometimes you're just trying to have fun, True. right? Yes, so of course. Yeah. you can do it either way. Yeah, that's that's a really good analogy right there. So, uh, what were what were some of the challenges that you faced in developing this and in, in figuring out the right balance, that sort of thing? Oof. So, interestingly enough, balance. <laughs> you gotta love it when an answer starts with "woof." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's obviously a lot going on in 2020. Um, yeah, it, the, the balance was actually one of the easier things to a certain extent because the game is very mathematical uh, under the hood, right? All of the action spots have a victory point uh, value to them. And so I just, I mean, I'm an engineer. I made uh, a couple of scripts in Excel and made a giant table and just went through iteration after iteration. And the standard deviation of victory points if if nobody stays first player the whole game because like most most games you know the first spot that you take typically yields the most points um if everybody switches first place then the the standard deviation of victory points at the end of the game is within two or three wow right it shouldn't be too random what ends up being random uh, are going to be the victory points that you yield uh, during each monster battle round um, because there are dice. And so the dice are going to be random. And as much as you've amassed like the best champions, the most on brand, the most abilities, the most uh, attack boosting possible, you could roll a bunch of ones. It's rare, but you could roll a bunch of ones. And that's the only thing that's going to end up being a larger deviation. And that in itself is really only going to be plus or minus three. Right. Um, so the game I feel is incredibly balanced. And if I pushed go on October 8th and sent out the game, I think in 98% of cases, everybody would be like, wow, that was totally fair all around, particularly because there are no trump cards, right? There's no like, oh, you got open Lord in uh, Lord's Waterdeep or something. You automatically win the game or everybody's now fighting against you. All of the cards are very balanced in that sense, particularly if there's an ability that is very powerful it's a victory point yield on the equipment is one or zero, ah, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So there's a way to balance that. But uh, back to the core question of challenges. Um, I've never done anything like this. And when I started it, I talked to uh, somebody that sells games to a lot of big companies and chatted with him for a bit. And he was a good friend of a friend. And he said, listen, no matter how you slice it, you have to make a complete game before you decide what to do with it. If you're going to kick it, if you're going to sell it to a company, if you're just going to make it for yourself, it has to be done, right? And so deciding to do that was a big step forward. And then uh, commissioning artists that had a similar style to what I tried to do. And there are over 10 different artists in this game. So very similar wow. to Magic the Gathering. I really wanted to have different styles. But still, when you look at something from three different artists for the same guild, you say, oh, 
that is very Paladin, right? right. That looks, yes. yeah. that is very, very on brand. Um, so all of that was very challenging, but I'd say the most challenging thing was being virtually done early March. <laughs> and then <laughs> everything coming to a screeching halt. Uh, but thankfully, my friends have been phenomenal. My family has been phenomenal. Everybody's really helped uh, play test the game. I've got a lot of good feedback from people that have never played games before saying things like, I don't know what I just played, but I know I had a lot of fun. That's good. Good feedback. Uh, And tabletop simulator. Wow. What, what a godsend to the gaming world because I was, I have all the assets. I could upload it and play with my friends virtually. And that's how we did the final play testing all virtually. A lot of games have done that this year for sure. And, and, you know, especially with uh, no, no, conventions happening that's it's it's been a godsend like you said um you know i I love the fact that you've balanced the game so much that uh you know when it comes to victory point games sometimes you find a game where it's like oh you know what there's no way i'm gonna win this because i can already tell tico has like 78 and i've got 40 you know but uh, it sounds like you've balanced it so much that you never really know who the winner is until the end like it's so yep. you're like, I, I feel like I'm winning. So it's going to feel like you could win throughout the whole game. And that's really that's where a lot of the fun comes from in a game. If you know you're going to lose, you stop having fun. And it sounds totally. like you've balanced it so that you're going to have fun because it always feels like you could win. You're always that close to winning. And, you know, I yeah. applaud you for that. Now, your Kickstarter ends on October 8th. It's going on right now. Uh, if somebody... Uh, is late to the game where will they be able to get asunder after the kickstarter ends that's a great question sean so i actually uh got three of that exact same question yesterday and i'll do my best to make sure that i can accept late pledges i don't know how it works on kickstarter i think you can so that's what i'll do uh but then eventually i'm going to have my own website and storefront and the objective here is to continue to improve upon the game so there are five guilds, right? You've got a whole bunch of champions in each of those guilds, but what if you had cross-guild champions? Ooh. What if you had monsters that actually were also champions? What if the equipment became spells? So I wanted to do a lot to expand on the game, but the core storyline uh, really felt like I wanted to stick to something simple that you can play out of the box. If nobody ever opened the rules, I'd think that with, the association of the icons on the back of the cards and the placement on the board, you'd be able to figure this out in about 15 minutes. That's great. That is fantastic. So the Kickstarter is on now. Go check it out. Back this game. Uh, Jeff, it sounds like it's an amazing game, uh, and I look forward to seeing it eventually on our table. Uh, Congratulations again on getting funded, and thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, Thank you guys so much. This was great. Thanks everyone for watching this interview. I had a great time. Uh, Please go to Kickstarter and check out my game Asunder. Really appreciate it. And if you could also go down and smash the subscribe button to OMG Nexus. Thanks.